Hey everyone, it's Caitlin Cahill with Geek You Need. Today I'm going to show you how to make this two page calendar layout that will be ready to print on KDP or you can sell it as a printable in and of itself. So I like to make my planners big. So I'm just going to start with a standard eight and a half by 11 US letter size document. I don't need bleed on this one because none of my elements are going to the edge of the document. So an eight and a half by 11 is just fine. Now I'm using word, but I'm going to be using headings and tables. And so really this can be done in any document creation that has those tools. So even including Google drive can do this as well. So open up just your eight and a half by 11 page. And then the first thing I do is set the margins. So under the layout tab in Word, I'm going to go to margins and I'm going to change it to this narrow half inch margin. And the reason that I do a half inch, there's two different reasons. So KDP's minimum margin requirement is 0.35 inches, but I often will take templates and merge them with other templates before I save my final KDP document. And then I add the gutter margin after I have all my pages correctly laid out. And so I, by using a 0.5 inch margin, I have that wiggle room to add a 0.125 gutter margin later on when I've combined it with multiple templates. The other reason is if I'm selling it as a printable for someone to print at home, most printers can't do a 0.35 margin, but that most can do a half inch margin. So that's why I use a half inch margin for most of my documents. So I have my document here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a header for the month and the year. I'm going to go ahead and style that on the home tab. So add different fonts and sizing. And then once I have my heading uh, style set, I'm going to save it as a heading one so that I can apply it to additional months and also easily restyle all of the headings at the same time. So you can do that via this heading one up here. I prefer to use the styles pane. It's a little easier and it's accessible from all the tabs. And so from the styles pane, I'm going to heading one. And the first thing I'm going to do is update to match the selection. So I have my heading selected. And so it's going to make that heading one style, the same font and size as what I have selected. Now I also want to actually make that a heading one. So with that selected, I'm going to click heading one. So now it's a heading one and all heading ones will have that font style. So now that I have that, I need to enter the table that will actually become my calendar. So you have to do a little bit of math and layout thinking before you create your table. So we have seven days of the week split between two pages, but what we don't want is that middle day to be cut in half by the spine. So we actually want four on one page and three on the other. And so I use the extra space on the second page as a notes column. So I'm going to add eight columns to my table and then a row for each week. Most months in a calendar have either five weeks or six weeks. So I'm going to create the six week calendar first because January in 2022 has six weeks. And then I'm going to, for other months, like for example, February, I can delete that last row and resize things a little bit. Now the tricky part here is that I actually want the notes column to have lines. So rather than just doing a row for each week, I actually want several rows within each week in order to create the lines for my notes column. So I'm going to do five rows for each day of the week. So six weeks, five rows, we're going to do 30 rows plus that one for the days of the week. So 31 rows. So I'm going to go up to my insert tab and I'm going to create a table. Now I can do the days here, but it doesn't quite let me do 31. So I'm going to go to insert table. Now this first page only has four of the eight columns because remember it's one half of a two page layout and 31 rows. 
So this is my basic table for my calendar. So to begin with, let's add the days of the week across the top. So now just like I did with my heading one, I'm going to style the days of the week and make them my heading two. I'm going to use the line spacing options to add a little space before and after. So now that I have the style that I want, again in the heading or in the styles pane, I'm going to change the heading to. I'm going to update to match selection and click heading to to make sure all the days of the week are designated as a heading to. So now that I have that, I want to change the size of these rows so that it expands to fill the whole page. But first, I want to make sure that my heading one has the correct spacing. So under line spacing, I want to add just a little bit after so there's a space between the heading and the table. And then now what I'm going to do is select all these rows that are going to be the days. And under layout, I'm going to change their height until they fill the page, but without running over. So you can see at point three, one of the rows runs over. So we're going to change it down just a little bit. So now the table fills the page without running over. So now what I need to do is create my second page with the same layout of the table. So I'm actually going to select even the header because I want that same space above the table on page two. Now if you are seeing your pages like this where it's vertical, I recommend changing your view to two pages at once. And so on the view tab, go to multiple pages and it'll put your pages side by side and then command V or control V on a PC to paste the table. Now I don't actually want the month name, so I'm going to, I just want the spacing from the heading one. So I'm going to delete the actual text and then obviously I have to change my days of the week here. And then this is going to be that notes column. Now what I actually like to do is split this column so that there's a little space between the notes and the, the calendar. So we're going to select that entire column and then under layout, click split cells and we want two columns and the same 31 rows. And then I'm going to make this left column much smaller because it's just going to be a little spacing. And then I'm going to select that column and I'm going to remove the border so it looks like it's just empty space. So then under table design, click borders. Now I could do no borders, but that'll also take off the right side borders of this column. So instead, I'm actually going to click the inside border. And what that will do, the first click applies this style that I have set here. The second click will remove those borders. So I'm going to do that again for the top border, select top border, click to remove, and then the bottom border, select bottom border and click to remove. So now even though the cells are there without the borders, it just looks like empty space. I'm going to add my notes heading. And then I'm going to remove the side borders here. So I selected that column and then I'm going to remove that left border and that right border. And then for this top one, I also want to remove the top and the bottom. There we go. So now I have a nice notes column here. Now for my days of the week, however, I don't want all of these lines. Now we did five rows per day. So I'm going to select five under Sunday. Now you could merge this cell into one, but I find that by merging these, but not merging these, it causes some spacing issues later on. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take out those borders again. So with those five selected, go to borders, 
click your inside borders and then click in, click it once again to remove those inside borders. So now we want to do this for each day for each week. So select five and then because the inside borders is already selected, I can just click that twice and then it'll remove them. So I'm going to do that for each day now. So now that I have my basic blank calendar ready to go, before I add any dates or holidays to January, I'm going to copy this layout 11 more times to make it 12 months long. So I'm going to go ahead and select both pages. Command C to copy and paste it 11 times. So now for January, let's add our days and holidays. So in January 2022, the month starts on a Saturday. So just like I did with my heading one and two, I'm going to style the numbers and apply them as a heading three. So apply that style to heading three and then select all the days and then apply that heading three. So now let's say I wanted to add just a little bit more space at the top. Uh, what I can do is, again, just change one and then update heading three. Or what I can do is next to heading three, select all and then change the style. And then update the style. The select all comes in handy if you want to do things that aren't saved in the style. So for example, if I wanted to make the days of the week all uppercase, that actually doesn't save within a heading style. So what I can do instead is go to heading two, select all. Now because I used that heading before I copied my months, you can see all of the days across all of the months are selected. And then I can change that all to uppercase. And then if you go, for example, just to see if I went to heading two and updated, you can see it doesn't actually capitalize it. So that's one of the few styles that doesn't actually save with the heading styles. So you have to use the select all to apply it. So now that I have my days, I'm going to add my holidays. So because we have all of these rows, I'm actually going to click at the bottom of that cell to get that. You can see there's those five cells. You just can't see them because of the border. And then I'm going to use my heading four for my holidays. And so I'll go ahead and do that for each of the months. Now let's look at February real quick though, because that's a five week month. So we, we're going to want to remove that last week. So I can see on January ends on Monday. So we're going to start February on Tuesday. So now because I don't need this row, 
I'm actually going to delete it. Some people make it into like another notes box. Um, I like to have as much space as possible for my calendar days. So remember it's five rows. So we want to select all five cells within that row and then right click on it and delete cells. It'll give you a couple options. You want to delete the entire row. And then obviously because we deleted a row, it had all the space at the bottom. So what we want to do now is select all these days up here and we're going to on the layout tab increase the height of these until again it hits the bottom of the page without going over. So 0.4 went over so we just want to decrease it a little bit till it just fills the page. So now we want to do the same on page two. So we're going to delete this bottom row. Now I didn't, I accidentally didn't select the notes rows, but that's okay because we're deleting the entire row. So it'll delete those as well. And then again, we're going to go and highlight those days. and change the height. And then of course for each month we'll change the header as well and add our holidays. So that's how you create a basic two-page calendar layout for your planners on KDP or to sell as printables. So you can go and change the fonts for different variations. You can add holidays for different cultures or different countries. Um, think of all the different ways that now that you have this basic template, you can go in and change it. You could add, you know, some designs at the top. You could really theme it depending on each one. So, but you have now a basic template that you can reuse in multiple different planners. You can also, so now that I have this, if I wanted to say make a smaller planner, I can actually just go ahead and change the page size and then resize the table elements as well. So, but I would do that after I have all of my days set. Um, so all of my months and all of my days. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments what other layouts you want to see me make. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you need to know to be successful on your KDP journey.